this video um, sort of comes under the category of um, pieces of my life, the, the series that I've been doing. And it's not a specific piece, it's just a bit of a chat really. But it's looking at one or two bits that are to do with me. Start with this. What is it? Well, it's a espresso cup bought to today for these nice long Fuji reflex which attracted me. And earlier I thought, why, why can't I do a Carolina Reaper soup espresso? There's no coffee in it. It's just an espresso soup. So it's the same soup, the amount of Carolina Reaper I put in for the, the large mug is in the espresso, which is pretty much what an espresso is. It's a more upcharged coffee. So here you go. The, the big mug is picking up, so what this is going to be like, you'll guess as good as mine. Yeah, it's got, got a flipping on to it. It's definitely hotter concentrated than it is to a, a mug that big, but it's nice. Got a bit of an oomph where it tastes like you just had a chew of um, part of Carolina Reaper pod. Where the bigger cup is hot. This is very fiery. But that's bloody good. Making more of those. On the chilli theme. But this looks nice when you buy it. The top is all covered in black plastic, which gives it a good look. And there's a label on it. I think it's the same source as you get in the skulls, which are a little bit smaller. These are seven pounds summit. The little skulls are two pounds summit. It's modeled on a hand grenade because it's explosively freaking hot um, I have tried it and it is it is hot when you smell it first of all when I smelled it I thought tomatoes and then I thought no not tomatoes it's similar line I suppose it's fruity it's a chilli fruity smell so I don't know if that gives any clues as to what it might be. It doesn't say what chilli it is, it just says chilli flakes, chilli powders. So, but it is flipping up. When it says fiery up, it is freaking fiery up. So, the chilli lives on. I can't feel my bloody tongue, but what the hell? So yeah, the chilli, what have I been doing lately? I have been buying lots of bits and bobs, lots of coffee bits and bobs. But I haven't been doing the Monday videos like I used to, where I'd do a video and show all the stuff I bought. And now I can't remember what I showed and what I didn't. But I've got lots of stuff. I don't know. I don't know if I did this in a video. I don't. I don't think I did. I was in a charity shop, and they had this. And it's like a dome with a just the head in it with blue air. That's all it was. No eyes. Nothing. Um, there's a little drawer in the bottom that you can put stuff, so I don't know whether it's something to do with something. 
Anyway, looked at it, I thought, I'll have it. I can probably do something with that. So I did, I got it. I decorated the face up a bit, because like I said, it's very plain. Uh, I did the eyes in white, dot eyes. Uh, did the lips red. It did have two fangs, so I, I painted the fangs out, so it's got red now. A little bit on the side of its face, which on its left side where the flesh is eating away to the teeth that might give you an idea and uh, when you see this lady in the film she um, tends to wear wedding veil over her head so I luckily had some white lace and it's come out like this so it's not the exact match I suppose but reminds you of the corpse bride a little bit there's where her face is melting away so there she is at the beginning a little bit beautiful um, Luckily there's the white lace ad which looks like the brides. So that sits over there on top of this big skull I have which is done as a big bowl. It sits on the top as a lid. So yeah, that, I wanted to show that really because I don't think I've done that and I wanted to talk like I did in the past about goth and creating. Now, way back at the beginning, it was all to, well, the majority of it was to do with, with creating. It just wasn't the stuff there. And even when some stuff come out, it was probably too expensive for some people. So you made up what you could to look like that whatever and it was the period of buying the dog collars I studied dog collars and everything lots of flipping good now lots of shops the the dog collars are sort of plasticky web type flipping thing it just not quite the same so yeah I've talked about it in the past Get your goth back to creative, being creative, doing things that uh, you can do. Um, and if you can't do them, have a flipping go at them. Colours, these sort of colours, I I make up myself now. That flipping expensive, uh, even Amazon that that can be expensive. So what I do is I go around charity shops. Especially the women's belts, you get thin ones, you get, I bought one that had little skulls along it, little metal skulls like studs. Um, some have got metal pieces in them, uh, just pattern wise, some don't have anything at all, some are embossed, whatever. But to the right size, uh, right thickness, probably because the the one shopper going to cost 50p each. Out of that, you can probably make two collars. You could definitely make a collar and a couple of different wrist straps or whatever. And you can also rivet them into all sorts of things. So this, yeah, this was a uh, part of a belt if I take it off I can have a look what's on the belt yeah and if you have a look on the belt that's got little skulls and little studs all the way around so that's a really good one this bit hanging uh, it's just the chain and it's hanging on two things I bought a packet of things off Amazon which you 
you push the screw through, screw it on and then it's got a little ring that you can hang stuff on. Two of those, chain on it and then in the middle, that funny enough, I bought about 60 for a pound. There were um, the heavy metal and the curtain rings for a shower. I could never find these when I, look, I was looking for O-rings or whatever. I could never bloody find them. But then I, I found this was a good way of getting them. And a little bit of a leather strap and the bit holding it on is just go down the hardware store, small nut and bolt, push it through, put the bolt on. Looks just as flipping good. Nobody particularly is going to go, oh, you're defecting me. So, yeah, I'll do that. Ah, oh, flipping out, yeah, this hangs. Right. Secondly, T-shirts. I normally buy T-shirts from a company online. I send them a picture I want, or I send them the words I want, and within four or five days it arrives. Pretty good t-shirt, premium t-shirt, and it'll have whatever you want on it. But this t-shirt, I think I bought from a shop a year or two back, uh, about four pound. And I found uh, online on Amazon, I can buy good t-shirts for three pound, my size. So I'm flipping happy with that. There's a lot of difference in price, but there's nothing on them. So this one is so guff, I'm dead. I put on myself and how did I do that? Well, went to shop and bought some of these. Black, white. This one was a, a silver sort of gray, I thought. Maybe that had toned down a bit of silver. And it's uh, acrylic paint. If you look at that, that's the white. Let's see how that goes in. That's worked. That's the black. The silver, if you do that, it stops in. Now, when I squeezed it out, it come out like a gunky lump. And if you tried anything with a brush, it was like just gunky. So I don't, I don't think you can do anything with that. To be honest, I think it probably over its time, is it? Anyway, white paint on black. What I tend to do, I've got one t-shirt with skulls on. I got cor cor corrugated cardboard, cut out the skull, cut out the teeth, the eyes, the nose and everything. Then I painted it over with uh, white acrylic paint and then laid the t-shirt out, laid the skull on, pressed it down a little bit and you get the skull. And what I like about it was it doesn't come out pure white. It, it's a little bit shady. So for me, it also makes it look like it's been on your t-shirt a little bit longer, you, you know, it, which I like, I like faded. So, but what you have to do is, if you're gonna do that on your t-shirt, put a big piece of cardboard or something inside your t-shirt, so that if you put anything on here, it's not going to go through onto the back and you see little bits of white on the back. This was just done by hand, which some people might say, yeah, I can bloody see that. But that's what I like about it. If I had this done in the shop, it would look pristine. And I didn't want it to look pristine anyway. So if you have a go at this, I did it with a paintbrush, cardboard inside, held it tight, did it with a paintbrush how I wanted to do it and that's how it come out and I'm, I'm happy with that. 
because it doesn't look spot on, perfect, perfect shape to all letters. I want it to look a bit oddball, but it does the job. So yeah, again, if you do a little bit of DIY, you can save a lot of flipping money. Three pound instead of by the time I've paid postage and everything, we're talking about 16 to 17 pound. You go out to buy a t-shirt somewhere. You could go out and buy this t-shirt with those words on and you, you can pay up to sort of 25 quid. Now for, for that to be print perfect, I'd rather pay bloody three quid plus a bit of paint. So have a go. And if it don't quite turn out exactly right, does it bloody matter? If you put goff and the, uh, you find the O's about bloody half inch further down than the left, doesn't matter. Looks flipping it was meant to be. Who's to say it should be or it shouldn't be that way? And the better you are, the, <coughs> ooh, the better you are, <coughs> the better you are, the better your t-shirt is. Oh, so that's one thing I do. I, I do try and do a little, di a little bit of DIY which will save me buying very expensive stuff. And it's okay for me. And if, if, I, if I had to throw that away, what well, I'm throwing, I think it's two pound way so worth it right other little bits about myself one thing that I do in my spare time I'm not going to do one today because you've got to set bloody cameras up at angles so you can see what's happening but just for the sake of it playing cards one of my hobbies is card tricks so I I find mo I've got one or two books with them in but I'll, I do look at a lot of uh, YouTube where they're showing you how to do tricks and learn one or two tricks and there's an uh, amazing one or two friends with a card trick now and then <laughs> I'm no bloody big magician put it that way the funny thing is with this, online they go, and you do this, and you do this, and you take a double lift. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Right, carry on watching, we're going to show you exactly how you do this. You get the cards, you do this, you do this, you do that. You take your hands and you take a double lift. And you go, Cool, great. How the freaking hell does that work? That don't work like he's doing it. So if you want to do something, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Practice, practice till it works. Like lots of things you do in life. Maybe the first time you started eating with a spoon, you kept bloody missing your mouth until one day, ooh, that bloody works. It's a bit like that. I try and if it's when they say just put your thumb like that and move the card over with your thumb and you're doing that and you're going why is the freaking card still staying there my thumb's flipping going somewhere else you got freaking glue on you but that is one of my little things that I love to do in my spare time I'll sit here and practice a bit of that so I'm going to bugger off now, just to show you that it's okay, do a little bit of DIY, do things for yourself, and obviously you've all got hobbies, that's one of mine. So folks, I can toast you with these dregs at the bottom, bottom 
thumbs up. And catch you later. If you look down there, there's links to the calendar. Thank you.